This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the dude. Welcome back to Hey Bartender Podcast. I am your bartender for the evening. You can call me the dude if you're bad at names, or you can call me Anthony if we become close friends. I appreciate everybody that comes and listens to this podcast. Uh, uh, Today, uh, this is the quick shot episode. We're just going to have a quick one and be on our way. At least that's what we fool ourselves to thinking right before we have about five or six more. But this is my show, so welcome to my bar. Have a seat. Relax. Let's talk have a little bit of fun uh as usual with every podcast that i've done i have have to start with the drink special of the day and this one got thrown at me uh i think it was uh somebody asked what it was but i decided to check it out and i'm going to tell you guys how to do it in case you don't know uh just like i did this drink is uh, a shot called the salmon run the salmon run is uh, I don't, I don't know. It sound, doesn't sound like it's for the faint of heart, but or people with, uh, uh, well, it's for people with eclectic tastes. Why don't we call it that? First, uh, this thing takes uh, three glasses. First, you need a shot glass, you need a rocks glass, and then maybe a chimney. But yeah, why don't we? Uh, why don't I tell you guys to do it this way? So, uh, in your shot glass, you put tequila, any tequila that you want, probably the cheaper the better. Uh, in the rocks glass, a double shot of V8 juice, and in the uh, the chimney glass, orange juice. You take all three of those in rapid succession. First, you uh, first you drink the tequila, drink the V8, and drink the orange juice. And uh, supposedly, the V8 and the orange juice um, uh, mask the unpleasant taste of tequila. So that's why I say the cheaper the better. So, uh, but if you want to waste your taste buds on uh, using something like Patron or something like that uh, by killing the taste with something else uh, yeah go ahead uh, some people have expensive tastes and I do not judge so uh, once you try that one out or you uh, well some of you are out of work right now and probably looking at creative ways to spend your time until your bars reopen uh, try that drink out Tell me uh, what you thought of it. Tell me how your how the night went after you did it. You can email me, dude, at heybartenderpodcast.com or message me on Facebook or Instagram. Look me up. It's Hey Bartender Podcast on both of those pages. Hey, quick, rem- uh, quick reminder, from now until the end of the year, heybartenderpodcast.com will be selling all of its merchandise at 30% off, all you have to do is just be there. It's an automatic discount code. All you have to do is just add stuff to the cart and buy it. So, you know, make it easy. You don't have no need to remember any uh, discount codes or anything like that. Just remember to go to Hey Bartender Podcast. Check out the merch and swag I got on there. And if you find something you like, just remember, anything you buy, absolutely anything, you would get 30% off the posted price. Head on over to www.heybartenderpodcast.com. So last weekend was Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, I was severely bored because uh, I didn't really do anything, didn't have anything to do. So I jumped on my motorcycle and started rolling around and started taking a look at the local businesses where I'm at. It, You know, craziest damn thing. Uh, the smaller venues, the, the places that actually refer to this, themselves as a bar, uh, probably have limited food, you know, you just, you know, they probably have maybe a burger and some chicken strips, something like that. Those all got closed down, but the big franchise restaurants are all still open. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm happy for all the people that work at the franchises and the corporate jobs, but uh, it's also kind of unfair to the smaller businesses. It It's actually killing small businesses. I feel sorry for uh, the small bars around my town that are independently owned, that they're not able to open their business because they have uh, kind of, they don't have a full menu. Now, I know in some of the states, uh, at least in Oregon, I know for sure uh, whether uh, it happens in your state wherever you're listening, 
I have absolutely no idea. I don't travel much. Uh, there has to be a certain percentage of food versus alcohol in your restaurant. Uh, otherwise, you're considered just a bar, and then the Liquor Control Commission can uh, take a look at your books and then charge you for it. It's another way for them to uh, make some money, I guess, other than to send sting operations in and uh, find the shit out of your bartenders and servers, those bastards. Uh, yeah, I said it because I'm a bartender. I don't, uh, I don't work for the government or anything like that. They have pulled some really shifty things on me and, uh, I passed every single time. So fuck you. But, uh, it's, you know, this, it's, go out and support your local, uh, small businesses because they're the ones that are actually getting in trouble right now. I mean, sure. You go, go to, if you have to go to that restaurant where you, uh, get the margarita at, out of the icy machine, just because that company can afford it. and But, you know, just remember that there are other businesses out there, and I want you guys to help the other small businesses out. It uh, It's truly scary. You can't even run a small business anymore. Probably one of these days, podcasts won't be able to be done without a license. And shit, I, maybe, maybe I just gave everybody an idea. Forget I said that! Boy, imagine the public uproar if they did actually have that. Because, you know, Joe Rogan went uh, specifically to Spotify and they're uh, editing the shit out of his shows and taking shows off because they're too controversial. But, uh, you know, you can't stop Hey Bartender podcast. Not with my following. People that follow my show are fucking awesome. Whether it's enough people to actually throw some kind of, I don't know, protest or something like, bring Hey Bartender podcast back. I have no idea. But uh, it'd be be a great feeling, though. I'm just saying. But that's beyond uh, not what I wanted to get to or talk about. Uh, I went into this one restaurant. It's a corporate restaurant because it was the only place that was open, and I didn't feel like cooking. I go into this place, and it's a bar. It's getting a little rowdy in there because football, sports, whatever, uh, I wasn't completely interested in what was on TV. I was more interested in the waitress that came up to my table. But I, I was sitting there just, you know, taking it in, you know, try, trying to get more ideas for my show, rock my memory of things that used to happen to me and uh, other things like that. But something did happen, luckily for me, that rocked my memory a little bit. How many times in your life, it's not even just in the bar, how many times in your life have you had somebody pester you? You know, like say push you, push you, push you, and then finally you push back and they're going their reasoning behind it was hey man, I was just messing around. You didn't have to push me back. What the hell? God, that's stupid, isn't it? It just boggles my mind to this day. I mean, it started all the way back in first grade. There's what you, well, I was just fooling around. I didn't, uh, I didn't actually mean it. He didn't, uh, he pushed me on purpose. Well, come on people. Uh, Nobody in this world is mature enough to realize you push somebody around enough. Eventually they're going to push back. And it's just a crazy thought that nobody in this world realizes that and it's, uh, you know, they can give shit, but they can't take shit. And, you know, that's why I tell you guys all the uh, all the time. Don't t- take any shit from anyone, and, and just you know, mostly just prepare. Uh, just telling you guys, people flip you shit, flip it, flip it right back. You don't have to take that. You're the bartender. You are the king. You are the queen. You are t- uh, my Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, I, I was going to go into the whole rush hour quote thing, um, but. You, you are the one that's in control of everything, but when all of a sudden this customer decides to flip you a little bit of shit behind the bar and all of a sudden you flip it back and they're like, what the hell, man? What's, what's wrong with you? I was just joking with you. You didn't have to say that. Good example. Uh, there was a customer that came into my bar uh, and he decided to go up to my cook because the restaurant that I was working at, uh, you could see the cooks and uh you know they weren't they weren't hidden behind a wall with a small window like most restaurants and uh 
that he decided that he had heard other people flipping him shit, but all of a sudden he decided that it was okay for him to flip shit, flip shit to him. And he'd only been in the bar a couple times at that point. So he walks up to the, my cook and says, Hey, how's it, uh, how's it feel to be a pain in the ass? And my uh, cook looks at him and says, do I know you? And he goes, uh, maybe not. And cook says, then I don't know you well enough to let you talk to me like that. Go away. And the guy comes into my, uh, my side of the restaurant with, which was where the bar is at. And he goes, I think I pissed off your cook. And I said, what'd you do? And he goes, well, I was just joking around with him. And I I stopped him and I said, okay, there's your problem. Uh, but please elaborate. And he says, well, I asked him how, how it felt to be a pain in the ass. And I said, what makes you think he's a pain in the ass? Well, everybody else calls him a pain in the ass. And I said, uh, first of all, what's your name? He tells me his name. And I said, well, uh, he explained to me everything that my cook had said to him right after that. And I said, well, it's just because he, you don't, uh, he doesn't know you, which he doesn't consider you a friend which doesn't give you the right to say anything nasty to him without him retaliating. So keep that in mind. So he says, oh, okay. Then uh, he finishes his drink and he walks over to the kitchen, in, uh, introduces himself, puts his hand out for a handshake. And then uh, my cook uh, uh, forgave him right then and there. And, you know, it could have it could have gotten uh, a lot more, uh, uh, heated, but I know my cook, my cook knew me. So he and I stuck up for each other our personalities didn't exactly gel with everybody else's, but we were always sticking up for each other. He stuck up for me more than him just because I'm, uh, a much bigger smart ass than he is. And people had a hard time with that. But the worst part of it was when it came to, uh, the argument between two customers, where it led to uh, both parties getting 86. Now, I mean both parties because I don't care who you are, how long you've been coming to my bar, how much money you spend at my bar. If you get in a fight in my bar, you're 86. That's the rule. That's what's going to happen. It might be for a couple day, a uh, couple weeks, a couple months, or depending on how bad the fight was, it might be for ever, and or at least until the. Uh, employees change up enough where nobody remembers who you are anymore. I mean, uh, an example would be, I've told you guys this story before. The, uh, the, I had two customers, three customers, actually, there were three people involved. Uh, the, the pool game that they were about to, uh, that they were playing looked like it was getting a little bit heated. Now the youngest guy of the three I guess he decided he didn't like losing. So he decided to try to do things to distract or piss off the guy who he was playing, who was Hispanic and uh, went to the point of actually using racial slurs. And that was the end of that. And uh, when I saw the first, uh, the first second I saw that there was about to be trouble, I jumped out and I uh, said, is there going to be a problem here? And they both realized, oh, the bartender is about to kick us out. Uh, time to calm down a little bit. Okay, uh, guys, separate right now. I don't care where you go, just not together. So a couple, uh, about a 10, 15 minutes later, all of a sudden they're shooting pool together again. I'd hoped, uh, because the Hispanic gentleman was a longtime customer. And at two different bars that I used, uh, used to work at, I, he may have followed me from uh, the one bar to the other. And, uh, of course, the kids started to lose, uh, lose the pool game again and encouraged this third guy to start flipping him shit yet again. And uh, it got to the point where I saw, uh, oh, uh, this is about to be some shit, and before I could make it out there, the uh, the Hispanic guy already threw like three or four Donkey Kong punches on the kid, and I told my cook to call call the cops. I separated all three of them, and it was luckily one of those situations where I grabbed the kid, tossed him off to the side, and then I stared the Hispanic gentleman right in the eye, and he went from kill mode to I just fucked up, and 
uh, the, I separated them all and I said, the police are coming. You, uh, so you all sit down, be quiet. I don't want to hear another word from any of you. And after that, I went to check on the other customers. Uh, I checked on my server because she, uh, the server I had at the time was pregnant and I didn't want her, or her baby to get hurt. Even though women do break up fights in a bar much more efficiently than a guy does because, uh, I think it's because guys offer more of a challenge and most reasonable guys, not all guys don't want to hit a woman. And, you know, it, you know, in this day of equality, I'm, may they, maybe that changed. I honestly don't know, but, uh, women do break up fights in the bar better than, better than men. So anyway, I set all three of them down. I walked over to the, uh, the bystander, that I didn't talk about much. And I said, you're 86. I don't want to see you in my bar here again. And then I walked over to the Hispanic guy and I said, you got in a fight in my bar. You're 86. And I walked over to the kid and the kid automatically started going, what? I was just messing around. And what was that? What's his problem? He punched me. Why are you? And I said, I don't care. I honestly don't care. You are 86. And by the way, the police are coming. So, uh, depending on, uh, how you handle that. Uh, good luck. And the police came. Uh, I believe all three of them got arrested because I had to start uh, tending to all the customers that were a little bit worried what was going on. Cause like, are we in a bar that where fights happen all the time? And I just walked over to every table and I said, Hey, how's it going? You, you, everything. All right. You guys need more drinks. All right. Just let me know. And, uh, I did my usual thing where I fake a yawn behind the bars. If that was absolutely no big deal. Where in actuality, my blood pressure was probably peaking at that point, but, uh, the kid tried that, tried to pull that on me. He, uh, he said, what? I was just fooling around. I wasn't doing nothing. And even though I had to 86, the, uh, the Hispanic guy that had been a longtime customer of mine, it's a bar rule, at least at the bar that I used to work at. Where if any of you have a uh, have any disagreement on a pool shot ruling, pick a number between eighty five and eighty seven. So I my hands were tied. I was actually forced to comply with the bar rules. And when I talked to my manager about it later, and he goes, "Yep, that's the rules. They're eighty six. Not uh, we're not doing anything about it." And uh, the uh, the kid did use racial slurs. The kid provoked uh, the Hispanic guy. And uh, I wish I could use his real name, but I can't remember. Um, it's been many years. I ran into him uh, about a week later, and uh, I guess it wasn't his first offense. Not the first time he's uh, uh, gotten into a fight outside or in public. But I went and asked him, I said, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, man, I got to go to court next week. And, uh, you know, I have, uh, and he was, Tell him that he's, uh, tell, he told me that he was, uh, sorry, you know, sorry about what happened and he had been drinking. And I said, no, duh, you were in a bar, but, uh, I was actually summoned to go, go to that court case, but I just opted out because I didn't have to be. So I didn't want to be, um, but the, the kid, I guess, got off with the slap on the wrist. I have no idea what happened to him and I have no idea what happened to that third guy. But, uh, it was, it was just one of those situations where, uh, the, those people, they're like, they go out and they actually provoke people into some kind of, uh, violent act and then just stand back and we'll go, what? I was just fooling around since when it, it, well, no, I've been, like I said, I've been hearing, hearing that sort of excuse since I was in grade school. What? I was just joking or what? I was just fooling around. It was only a joke. Come on. Why do you have to be so, why do you have to be like that? And it's, it's just this whole thing where I just don't think people take responsibility for their actions anymore. And being in the bar, uh, it just made it more fun that I could watch goofy things like that. Because, like I said, I was sitting in sitting in the uh, in that restaurant earlier uh, on Sunday, and two guys all of a sudden start getting into a fight, you know, pushing each other back and forth. 
and uh, the uh, the wait staff ran and got uh, the kitchen help to help pull him apart because they were huge. And uh, one guy was just uh, screaming obscenities, calling the guy an asshole and whatever. And the other guy was just like, what, what, what was I doing? I wasn't doing anything. And uh, the corporate uh, corporate type of situation, I haven't heard too much about whether they 86 people that much or not. Now, in a small mom and pop bar, you can get 86 fairly easily and it will stick. Like I said, until, uh, you know, uh, until they dis- decide that, okay, you've learned your lesson, you can come back, or enough uh, employees have changed over where nobody recognizes you anymore. And uh, that story that I was telling you where the, the pool table problem, uh, the thing that pissed me off the most is that my server, who had been working for that company a lot longer than me, but unfortunately, when the bartender's in charge and ha- makes the final ruling when the manager's not there. That, that's the rule in that bar, and that's the way the rule always has been. And she sat back and tried to pull seniority on me and said, you can't 86 him. He didn't do anything. I said, he punched the kid. And, well, the kid provoked him. I said, I don't care. And she was just like, well, I'll, I'll get him back in. I'm going to have a word with the manager. And I said, you go right ahead because you see that rule that's written on the wall? That was written by him. And if you're going to go against his own rule, that that's going to be your problem. And I don't know if she ever actually approached him about it. When I talked to uh, the manager after that, he's just like, nope, guy's gone. Uh, that's the rule. You have a problem on you get in a fight in the bar, you're out of here. And so I was like, oh, thank God, a manager that'll back me up. Because uh, at other bars that I've worked at, the manager's uh didn't back you up they you know they either went above your head or just told uh told the customer because they were friends with them or they wanted their business oh no you can come back in don't worry about it. Did you learn your lesson okay yeah come back in and then you know you come in on the day after and say didn't i 86 you yesterday and just, oh and the manager said i could come back in and i turn and look at the manager and I, they say oh yeah it's okay and then I beat my head against the wall over and over and over. And I said, you're not going to penalize this person at all? Come on. So my advice to all you bartenders and servers out there, you know, stick to your guns. Uh, if somebody is bothering you and you decide to retaliate, you own that shit. And just, uh, you know, if they start to push you, you push right back. If they try to kill you, you kill them right back. That was from Firefly, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. That's I just had to say that. Don't try to kill people. Killing's bad. Unless something happens on the way home and they accidentally fall on a knife 16 times. No, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't use that excuse. That's mine. Ha! <laughs> Well, that's it. I'm just that was just a short rant for this week or this Wednesday's short shot or quick shot episode of Hey Bartender podcast. I just felt like going off on that a little bit cuz that sort of thing really pisses me off what i wasn't doing nothing he i I was just messing around and he just decided to hit me just because i pushed him and then jabbed him in the stomach with a knife and he pushed me i i I was just sitting here not doing anything uh you know they're just you can tell their story changes like 17 times in four seconds but anyway now that i got that off my chest i feel a little bit better uh so Anyway, people, I am so close, so close to my goal of 10,000 downloads in a year. And I would really appreciate it if you guys ran around, told your friends, uh, told your waitress, told your bartender, told the waiter, uh, and people in the restaurant industry about Hey Bartender podcast, tell them to go download it, listen. I uh, have a few good things to say, a few goofy things to say. And very few complaints about what stuff I say. Usually I get people going right on. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoy this show, please tell your friends to uh, download it and have a listen because I am so close to 10 grand. It, there's no value in it other than that's my personal goal for this year. So tell your friends about Hey Bartender Podcast. Also, if you want to get a hold of me, 
uh, if you want to be on the show, if you have a quick story you want me to tell people on the show, or you're a band that wants to have your sound out there, email me, dude, at heybartenderpodcast.com. I'd love to share your stories. I'd love to have you on the show. I'd love to play your music. That's just the things that I do. And uh, remember to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram, it's Hey Bartender Podcast. Twitter, it's Hey Bartend P. Bar, hey Bartender P. O. One. Couldn't get Hey Bartender Podcast for some reason. And uh, it wasn't taken even either. I don't know. Uh, cause I haven't gotten any complaints from anybody saying, Hey, you stole my, the name of my podcast. And then I had to try to think of a name for another podcast. I'm really rambling right now. So, uh, anyway, new shows every Wednesday and Saturday, 7 PM central standard time. And, uh, you know, appreciate you guys totally for showing your support this year. I mean, 10,000, uh, a lot of podcasters get that in one show, but you know, I'm, uh, one of the smaller podcasts out there. So, you know, thanks for, uh, listening. Thanks for helping me out. I appreciate every single one of you. So until the next show, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to remind you, I give you lots of love, lots of sex, lots of happiness, and don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. What do you mean it's last gone?